Hello, I'm Michael Phipps, Director of Omaha Public Library. I want to welcome you to your new job and to introduce you to some key supervisors who will tell you about the library and your place in it. As library pages, you're very important to us. The purpose of today's videotape is to teach you some things that will help you to do your job better, to explain some rules and procedures, and to introduce some key staff members, some management staff, to give you an opportunity to ask questions. If you have questions, you should write them down and ask your immediate supervisor as soon as the tape is finished. The library is managed by a team of supervisors. While many of you will have little or no contact with us in your day-to-day -day work, we want you to know who we are, and we look forward to a chance to meet with you. The people you will hear from today are Genevieve Price, Supervisor of Children's Services, Beryl Davey, Supervisor of Adult Services, Dale Porchy, Supervisor of the Main Library, and Verda Bialak, the Supervisor of Technical Services. So let's get started. To begin, Mrs. Bialak will tell you something about the library system. We don't expect you to memorize the figures, and you will not be tested on this. But we do think that you should know something about the range and the scope of the organization that you work for. The Omaha Public Library is a department of the City of Omaha. It was founded in 1877, which makes it one of the oldest city departments, and it's one of the oldest and largest libraries in Nebraska. The library is governed by a board of employees consisting of nine people appointed by the mayor. The board hires a director who is responsible for the administration of the library including the hiring and the supervising of staff. The library is supported by city taxes and is responsible for service to the citizens of Omaha. We have contractual agreements to provide services to some, but not to all, of the nearby communities. Others who wish to borrow from the library may do so by paying an annual fee, which is currently $50. The library provides hundreds of specific services but they can generally be grouped into four areas. The first of these is the loan of materials, including books, magazines, pamphlets, cassettes, compact discs, and so on. The second are cultural services, some designed specifically for children, including recreational reading, story times, puppet shows, and craft activities. And the third is information and reference services, which range from quick facts to in-depth research. Finally, the last is assistance to students. To provide these services, the library has an annual budget of close to $5 million. It employs a staff of 160 people, one-fourth of whom are highly trained professional librarians. It has a collection of more than two million items. It operates a main library and 10 branches. In one year, the library loans nearly 2 million items, answers 350,000 questions, provides meeting space for nearly 50,000 people, and performs many other services besides. As a library page, you are part of a large and vital organization, and the work you do makes an important contribution to the whole. Your accepting a job with the city creates some responsibility on both our part and on yours. We are responsible for training you in the specifics of your job. We will teach you what you need to know to do your job well. You are responsible for asking questions when necessary to make sure you understand all that is expected of you. Further, we understand that for many of you, this is the first real job you have had, babysitting, yard work, and other kinds of casual labor are all useful preparation, but they are very different from working for a large and sometimes in personal organization. We are not your parents or your teachers, and we have no desire to be either, but we are more than willing to show you the ropes of the working world. You should seize the opportunity to cheerfully modify your behavior when necessary to better fit into this organization. Some specific areas need particular attention, hard work. 
It should go without saying, but our experience has shown that it does not. We expect you to work hard and keep busy. When you complete an assignment, go immediately to your supervisor for another. A day's work for a day's pay may sound hopelessly old-fashioned to some people, but is exactly what ex is expected of you. Following directions. You should follow directions to the letter without arguing. There are good reasons for the ways of doing things in the library in order for it to function properly. It's important that you don't introduce your own ways of doing things. As you come to understand not only how things are done, but why they are done in a certain way, your opinion and suggestions will be welcome. But at this stage in your employment, it is important that you do your job according to the instructions given you. Communication. Good communication with your supervisor, co-workers, and customers is an essential element to the success in any job. Don't take anything for granted. When in doubt, ask. If you have a problem, talk to us. Suffering in silence, pouting, or other techniques you may have used in the past will not work in the business world and will get you nowhere. On the other hand, mastering the ability to communicate with others is one of the keys to success in the working world. Priorities. For some of you, having a regular job may force you to set priorities for your activities for the first time. We expect your priorities to be as follows. Academic work, library work, everything else. This means that you are sometimes going to miss out on activities at school and at home because you have to work. Do not ask us to rearrange your schedule because of this. If your academic workload and your library workload are incompatible, you should resign. Your first job as a student is your schoolwork. For those of you with children, arranging for responsible care is your responsibility. Do not ask us to rearrange your schedule because you do not have a babysitter. And do not bring your children to work with you. Attendance. You must work the hours you are scheduled. Read the sections in the information for library pages on work schedules and attendance and follow them to the letter. Nothing short of criminal activity on the job makes a worse impression on an employer than a poor attendance record. It is one of the first things that a, any potential future employer will ask us about you. Do not ask us to rearrange your schedules or school or family events except in the rarest of circumstances. In case of emergency, be sure to give the notification outlined in the manual. And let's be clear about what constitutes an emergency. The library takes a narrow view of it. For example, studying for an exam, working on a term paper, getting ready for an important dance, or practicing for a play, sporting event or music event do not constitute emergencies, and you should report as scheduled. Appearance. Your personal appearance is important. It reflects your attitude toward your work. It creates an image of the library that customers carry away with them. We expect you to be always clean, neat, and well-groomed. What you wear to school may be all right most of the time, but there are some specific rules. No tank tops, shorts, see-through shirts or blouses, or similar types of clothing are allowed. We would prefer that none of you wear jeans, and they are prohibited for anyone working at a public service desk. Shoes must be worn at all times. In addition, you are not allowed to smoke or chew gum, tobacco, or any other substance at any location except in the staff lounge. It may seem that we expect a lot of you, and we do. Get into the habit of doing things right. Good working habits will serve you well here and in the future. We think of people who use the library as customers. The library is, after all, a business. And those who use our services are our customers. You may hear the people who use the library referred to as patrons, that's the traditional term for library users. Or perhaps as the public, they all mean the same thing, very important people. They are the library's VIPs. Customers is what the library is all about. It is the most important thing that any staff member does. It is the most important part of your job. Many of you will work directly with customers most of the time. When you are serving customers, you are the library to them. It is important for you to make a good impression. Your skill in dealing with people is very important, not only because we tell you it is, 
but because it is probably the most useful thing you will take with you from this job. There are not too many careers in shelving books or pasting pockets, but handling people is likely to be a part of any job you take in the future. So let's talk about a few basic techniques that you should use in successfully dealing with library customers. Contrary to what you've heard, you will be tested on what I'm going to say every day because the way you deal with people will measure your ability to do your job. First, a few things to do when you're on duty at the desk. Top of the list, smile. A basic job requirement, smile. No excuses, smile when you help a customer. Next, make eye contact with whomever you're helping and greet the person you're serving. A friendly but polite, hi, how are you today, is sufficient. Also, use the customer's name when possible. It's on the card or application, but remember to use the polite form, Mr., Mrs., or Miss. When you're answering a library telephone, use the whole name of the library, Millard Branch Library, Benson Branch Library, and sound pleasant and alive. Put a little smile in your voice. If you must put a customer on hold, say please and thank you. Finally, when you hang up or end any transaction with a customer, say thank you or goodbye or both. Now, a few things to avoid. Avoid non-work related conversations with other staff members when either of you is on duty. Customers may interpret this as a waste of time and therefore a waste of their tax dollars. Do not conduct any kind of personal business. That means having people contact you, except in emergencies, or using work time to make appointments or calls. Avoid doing homework or reading at a public service desk. If you are not busy helping customers, ask your supervisor for work to do at the desk. But be sure not to ignore the customers who may approach. Volunteer your service. Don't wait to be asked. Do not answer reference questions, questions about library policy, or advise customers on what to read. This is not your job. If a customer does not accept library policy, do not argue. Politely refer the person to your supervisor or the full-time staff member on duty. Most of the people you meet in the library are friendly and will respond to your friendly, pleasant attitude. However, occasionally you may encounter a customer who is angry, abusive, drunk, mentally disturbed, or otherwise threatening. Do not attempt to handle this situation yourself. Go to your supervisor or another full-time staff member and have them handle the situation. That about sums up my message. Everything I've told you is pretty simple, but very important, so use it. One or two general things you might remember. First of all, it is always safe to be pleasant and courteous in any situation. And second, if you don't know how to handle a situation, it probably means that you shouldn't attempt to. Find someone who can and smile now, I want to introduce you to Ms. Genevieve Price, who will tell you something about the inner workings of the library, the chain of command. Pages sometimes misunderstand the chain of command in a large organization like the library. The library organization is illustrated by this chart. Basically, you answer to your immediate supervisor, who is either a department head or a branch librarian, who answers to one of the supervisors you have seen on this videotape, who answers to the assistant library director and the director. The inescapable fact which you must recognize and cope with is that at the bottom of the heap. The plain truth is that there is no one except another page who cannot tell you what to do. Don't fight it. Just accept it gracefully and do what you are told with no argument. Everybody has to start somewhere and be at the bottom of the heap sometime, and this is your turn. You will only make trouble for yourself if you don't accept your status cheerfully 
and go about your business of doing the best job you possibly can. This videotape has been designed to explain the basics of being a library page at Omaha Public Library. More detailed information can be found in the brochure, Information for Library Pages. Please read it carefully. Anytime you have a question about policy, procedures, or anything else about your job, ask your immediate supervisor. Don't try to second guess. The work you do is important, and you were chosen from a pool of applicants because we believe that you can meet the exacting standards that we have. We want to work with you to make your job with Omaha Public Library rewarding, productive, educational, and pleasant. Let's talk about a few basic techniques that you should use. I'm sorry. Okay, that's fine. There's something. Nothing short of criminal activity on the job makes this impression good. And Priorities. For some of you, having a rabid like That's a bad one, right? Happy thing. over there they won't know I can't see that will they and operates a main library and oh that's wrong <laughs> to get too involved in your work to pages sometimes misunderstand the command of the chain of command in a large organization start over yeah the inescapable fact which you must re recognize is that all right yeah it worked fine <laughs> 